In 2015, we decided to check out Eastern Kentucky for the first time. We hiked around a lot and we found a lot of wildlife. And we found some prints that were actually human prints. And then in October 2016, nearby I joined a three-day expedition with uh, 30 people and several BFRO researchers. This is Gabe. He's meeting one of the researchers here. And uh, yeah, they cooked us a lot of good food there too. This is a demonstration on casting prints. Ready to go. After we broke up in several small groups, we went out that afternoon and started researching. That night was our first night expedition with thermals and all our night gear. The next day I got to speak about my childhood encounters. Later that day, a couple of guys and I decided to hike about four miles out to the bluffs and stay the night. Uh, I think their names were Nick and Jim. We saw a lot of cool things all along the way. Wildlife and little caves. Big caves. We also recorded these strange calls. We didn't get any answers back after that, but when we did calls, we got acorns thrown at us for about 45 minutes to an hour. After that, it got quiet for a long time. We decided to hike back at 4 a.m. because it was cooler and we could get back to the camp and sleep in our tents. Sleep in that day. We slept in, we got up. Late in the morning, everybody had already hiked and everybody was all tired out. So, everybody's tired. They sent me with this, this kid Gabe, a 10-year-old boy. They said, uh, he knows the trail and only take you 15 minutes to walk the trail and back. I wanted to check out the old trail where it connected with the new trail. Well, it didn't take very long. We went down there, it took about five minutes to find that trail. We decided to hike a little bit further. Oh, We're standing right there. After walking about at least five more minutes, we came to a curve in the trail where there was a bunch of bamboo. At that point, we had found another couple hikers that were lost and looking for directions. While we were talking to the hikers, our back was to the bamboo that was behind us. The hikers were facing the bamboo and they were talking to us asking directions. We told them where the parking lot was and which way to go and they kept on talking. Well, a whoop came from the bamboo behind us. They talked right through it like it was nothing. Pretty soon they left and when they were leaving, there was a loud tree knock behind us in that same bamboo. The hikers actually heard that and said to themselves as they're walking away, what was that? But Gabe, he said, let's wait for them to leave and do a tree knock and see if we can get an answer. We did a few tree knocks and we didn't get an answer. We decided to hike a little bit further with the trail went up the ridge a little ways further. 
Gabe leaded the way, talking all the time. I was pretty exhausted. He did a lot of talking. His voice was echoing all through the woods. Then he looked back at me with his jaw wide open. Then he looked back to where he was looking. And then I finally looked to where he was looking at the bamboo. And what we both saw was a juvenile Sasquatch on all fours going back into the bamboo. But Gabe had a much longer look than I did. At that point, they decided to turn around and go back. I had a cell phone that didn't work down there at the time. It didn't have service. We're hiking back. I wasn't too concerned, but I did keep Gabe in front of me at all times and kept an eye on him. Then we got up to the bluffs. At this point, Gabe kept on claiming he was seeing more Sasquatch paralleling us. There's one up on top of the, the bluffs, and pretty soon they were popping up around tree. We kept on going down the new trail. We ended up walking probably 45 minutes longer than we should have been. But about 20 minutes into that hike, he kept on seeing more and more of these Sasquatches popping around trees. And eventually, I started seeing them on either side of us, one or two on either side of us. I was getting really concerned at this point, but I didn't want him to know that I was concerned. We finally made it back fine, and later we got to tell the others about our encounter. And later that night, another research team got a thermal reading in their own encounter on that same trail. Then in November of 2016, Daniel and I returned. about 45 degrees that morning and we found several prints. We cast them. Later I returned to show Gabe the prints that we found. In the spring of 2017, we returned to retrieve the trail cams. At some point during the day, we were sitting in an empty, like an empty campground. There was nobody there. Somebody pulled in next to us with a horse trailer, got out their horses and their umbrellas and sat right next to us. Well, we didn't want to be rude and we wanted to go smoke and all we did is just go walk off the grassy area to where it sat like a plateau and went down to a hill all the way around the campground. We're surrounded by woods and swamp. Uh, we found a log to sit on, and we sat there and talked. Well, <laughs> we're sitting there talking, smoking. It wasn't more than two or three minutes. Some small stones were getting thrown towards us. I thought it was kind of odd. Didn't really notice it at first because they were small, but then they got bigger, and then they were the size of a softball. Uh, by that time, I realized what it was. The guy when I who I was with wasn't a believer, uh, was becoming a believer quite quickly at that point. Um, he realized that nothing else out there could throw a rock like that, but I spoke to the Sasquatch and I told him that we didn't know they were down there. We weren't going to come down there and the rock throwing stopped immediately right then and there. We also recorded these strange calls. In 2018, I went down by myself and got nothing but tree knocks, which is fine. In the late fall of 2020, Daniel and I returned to Kentucky. It 
zoomed in this is the best I can do. We didn't have enough light. This was uh, filmed on a Cyanix Pro. Thanks for watching.